So, um, I'm a founder and CTO of KeepSafe, and um, we started with a very simple app that allows you to hide photos on your phone with the goal to be the service where you keep all your personal and private data safe and can exchange, exchange them in a safe way. And um, as I said, we started with a photo hiding app on uh, Android, and then we, were, we launched iPhone later. I think we're one of the few companies out there who did Android first. Um, it turned out very well for us. Uh, we, um, we are 25 million users now. We grew all organic. We have never spent a dollar on advertisement or anything. We have never been featured in any of the stores. Um, so it's purely grown organic through search and word of mouth. Currently, we're working on making KeepSafe from a simple app to a service which basically means when you lose your phone and you open KeepSafe somewhere else, that you still have... I think you're right. <laughs> um, so the goal is when you lose your phone, um, that you still have your stuff on, on another phone, and um, we can provide a lot more cool things. So this is KeepSafe, you open it, it's a four-digit pin, so I'll just enter the pin. Um, Brings me to my keep tape. I have two albums right now. Um, my main album and the one with my presentation that I'm giving a little. And um, so when I open the main album now, there's like four images. And now what I want to do is I want to open keep safe on, um, on my Android device. Um, looks very similar. It's also a pin. Um, so what I want to demo now is I want to take a photo of you guys and then it will upload on this device and it will automatically appear on the iPhone. So photo's taken, it's uploading, I have a little indicator here that it's spinning, it's hard to see from the back. Now there's a crown on it and now it appears here. Um, I will explain a little how this works. Um, we put a bunch of effort into this to make it actually really smooth and, and fast and um, consume little battery and all the neat stuff that you can do with this. Um, so how does this work? So we build everything based on Amazon um, with, with the goal to be able to scale to our user base. Um, as I said, we are like 25 million users now, which of close of half of them are monthly active users. Um, I don't have a current exact file count what's in KeepSafe, but it, um, it's way past 3 billion um, photos in KeepSafe right now. And as you guys all know, those Cameras um, make pretty good photos, which means there's a lot of data. KeepSafe works that everything is offline, so whenever you open your KeepSafe, it's all there. It's not like Dropbox where you have to download it. Um, I had the problem myself. I'm standing at the airport. Um, you know, I'm an immigrant, so like, where is your I-974 paper? And I'm like, uh, it's in my Dropbox, uh, but it didn't work. Um, so that shouldn't happen. Um, avoid secondary inspection in this case. So um, I'm just going to show you. How this, how this works in, um, in an overview. What I want to focus on is how we do real-time sync in terms of like I add a photo, it uploads it to the server, and it appears immediately um, on the other device with an architecture that will scale to 20, 100 million users by just adding more machines. Um, so basically what you see here is there's two devices. Each of those devices has a device ID and um, each device is logged in with the same account, obviously, right? So there's an account ID and um, there's a device ID for each device. So when I take a photo, what the client does, it will, it will start uploading the photo to our file service, which is a bunch of EC2 machines. They're all like standard medium instances, so you can add as many as we want. And so it will upload it to our file service there's another service that keeps track of what do I have in my KeepSafe, whereas the file service is responsible for storing. So the file service is connected to Amazon S3, where the files are actually stored. Um, the way we do it is we, when we get those files, we split them up in different chunks. We encrypt all those chunks, and then we store them all in S3, so it's all nice and encrypted. We don't rely on Amazon's encryption. And then what happens next, if this device uploads a file that the file service will notify our contact service. And 
what it basically does when it connects the first time, it will say like, hey, I'm user A, and this is my device ID, let's say one, two, three. And the file service will tell this the contact service, whereas the contact service is storing um, a lookup table from device IDs to IPs. And IPs in this case is basically the IP of the, what this lookup basically is basically is like a lookup for which server, actual server, is this device connected, right? So it stores the IP address of the EC2 machine, which is the internal IP address, and the device ID. And um, what happens the next time, if this device is uploading a picture, it will upload a picture, and then it will say like, hey, I have, I'm user A, please notify all devices that I have currently connected about mm -hmm. this change. So this machine will call to the contact service and say like, hey, what devices does user A have? The contact service will ask our accounting system where all user accounts are registered and with each device I sign on, we store the device ID for each account so I know which devices exist to this account. And then the accounting service will tell the contact service, here's a list of devices that this user has. And what the account service then does, it looks up in the Redis database, which of those devices are currently online and, um, and then it will send basically the message that this device wanted to send to this device. The account service will send this to the machine where the other device is currently connected and will push that message down to the service, uh, to the client. And um, how we do this part basically is um, we, we designed a custom protocol which is, um, which is based on sockets. So we'll, each device, when you open the app, will open a socket connection to, um, to the file service and the connection will stay open. And um, on, on each socket connection, we have the ability to have multiple sessions. So I can say each file upload and each file download, for example, has an individual session so I can jump freely between sessions, which also allows me that when I flicker really quick through the app and the pictures, and I stop, that it says, okay, I have to download this picture that I'm currently seeing, and then when I continue swiping, I can pause the download of this picture and start downloading the next one, and then I can just resume this later. So I can basically, it's similar to having multiple connections open, but we mimic this all over one socket connection with different session IDs. And as this connection is open, the file service machine will basically push down to the client that there has been a change and, um, and then the client will fetch the picture. And that's what happens when I add the photo and it will just appear on the device. And um, the stuff, like the part where we spend a lot of time, in, time is um, how can we build a service that basically allows us real -time, a real-time stateful machine which will scale, um, which will scale to, to 100 million users and above. So, um, that's what we are working on right now. Um, this is partially released to some beta users, and um, we will roll this out continuously over the next few months. And um, yeah, that's what we've been working on. Actually, I have one. Uh, what about questions? What kind of encryption do you use for your photos and videos? So um, it depends on where. Um, so on Android we use uh, AES encounter mode and on iPhone we use AES as CBC um, which has to do with the, with the support that, um, that the iPhone platform has um, and um, on the server um, I think we also use using AES encounter mode with a different key per file chunk. Um, actually what's the current latency on the um um, it's like normal latency you get to, to, um, to EC2 with a little less because we don't have to first open the connection. Right? Um, it also then really depends on like what network you're on and like and are you on Wi-Fi, are you on Edge, are you on 4G. Do you have like an average projection on that? So currently like in the US it's like something under 100 milliseconds on, on good networks. Um, I don't really think latency is the main issue on this because as you download file bodies um, throughput is a much bigger problem than initial latency of like requesting a file. Does the application support video or is it strictly? Uh, photos and videos. Right. So, um, and we encrypt both uh, local. 
which has been tremendously hard on Android. Um, whoever tried to do this, it's a pain. What's the use model for uh, encrypting the you know, personal picture and then just, it's nice to have? So um, the use case why people use it, so there's like two aspects of this question. Right? One is the why do I hide stuff in the first place? And then the other is like why do we encrypt it? Um, okay. So hiding stuff in the first place is uh, we always make the analogy. Um, five years ago it was really easy when you got a stack of photos to manage who sees them. Because some of them you put on your fridge and some of them you put in a photo album and some of them you might put in a shoebox in your, in your closet. Right? <laughs> and when you have like friends coming over, the ones on the fridge are pretty public, that's the ones everyone can see because everyone is allowed to go in the kitchen. Um, on the photo album, you already kind of like choose if you pull it out of like, if you pull it out and show it around. Whereas the ones in the shoebox are, are like a lot more personal and usually other people don't see them, right? And um, as everything moves to digital, and especially with phones, all the photos are in the same camera roll. That means if I want to show you a photo, um, I basically give out all the photos I have to you, right? And then if you start swiping through, you see everything. Um, and what people are using for is like all kinds of stuff. So we have like, interestingly, we have a bunch of guys who are like tracking their personal fitness progress with it. Um, what they do is like, you know, they, they, they take photos of their apps um, <laughs> over time to see if they are progressing. But um, they feel it's pretty embarrassing if they show their bodies like photos from partying and suddenly there's like, you know, white <laughs> stomach all over the place. Um, I had another friend at brunch recently. He's like, you know, like, oh, no, I'm a keepsafe user. I'm like, what do you use it for? I was like, yeah, I'm like looking at engagement rings and like I'm, I'm shopping around and I take a bunch of pictures and my girlfriend shouldn't see them. Um, there's like, you know, all kinds of use cases, obviously like couples and everything. And then the reason why we encrypt it is that um, you should not be able to bypass uh, the app. Right? So the only way in and out is through the app and not through the file system. You mentioned that you, so S3 has encryption on the bucket, but it sounds like you guys do the encryption yourselves. Is there, is it, you just don't want, you don't trust Amazon, or is it you want to kind of handle that purely in the system keeps it, or is there a technical reason? Um, so one is I don't want to, I don't want to trust Amazon on that, okay. um, because I don't know who sniffs around in there. Um, so that's the main reason why we, why we do it ourselves. Yes. What uh, challenges are you guys facing and kind of growing in the product you have today? So, there's a lot of uh, angles to that, right? Um, is that you're thinking more from a technical perspective or more from a user growth perspective? Maybe like the top two things that are just limiting you from, I mean, I'm, just, I'm assuming you're facing some challenges. So, what are the two main things that are happening? Also, like an ongoing main challenge is how do we make a product that is like really easy to use and fast? but still make it safe at the same time, right? So security products have been around since 20 years and no one uses it because it's a pain. And uh, we want to make it that, you know, my, my cousin can use it without any troubles and without thinking about it. And um, that has been an ongoing challenge that has been really hard um, to make like fast, fast scrolling, um, fast, like uh, scrolling really fast without, uh, with having data only encrypted on disk and never, um, and never like encrypted. Um, and then like, you know, the usual, like what, what to build next and how to grow faster than we grow. Um, I would say that's like, and like how to build a backend system that, that, will, that will be able to support our users um, as we roll it out. Because when you start fresh and you have like 10 users, then you build something for 10 and then you know, like you have 100 and you build something for 100, so you can adjust. Um, but with this, it's like as we roll this out and we know there will be like 10 million people using it out of the get-go. Um, it's kind of like you have to take a different approach on how to build things. Actually, is there, are there any plans to build your own infrastructure and rely on uh, Amazon? You mean like instead of Amazon? Yeah. Not at the moment. Hmm. Amazon is not cheap, right? I mean, no, it's, it's convenient. It's convenient. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, it's, it's easier to find money than to find time. So that's why we choose. Good for you. <laughs> 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 I think that's it. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks so much.